Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I got this crackle effect using spray paint. We're going to start off with a 32 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia. All I have done is prepped my cup using Mattify from Artistry and then I'm going in with the Colorflex glitter glue. I'm so awful with closing the top of my glue because I use it so much. So I end up having to unscrew the lid because my lid gets clogged up since I don't close it. So I just dumped my glue on there and I'm using the all over makeup brush. I grabbed this one from Walmart and it is e.l.f. brand. This is my favorite to use. Obviously you get really good coverage with this glue. It's a little bit thicker so I feel like the glitter really grabs a hold of it or it grabs a hold of the glitter rather, and I don't have to seal before going in with a coat of epoxy. So for our glitter, we are using our custom mix Ava Grace from PDB Creative Studio. After I apply this glitter, I'm gonna allow it to sit for two hours for that glitter glue to dry, and then I will go in with two coats of epoxy or epoxy until it is smooth. So my original idea for this was to do a crackle peekaboo. And I always get frustrated that the crackle just does its own thing. Sometimes it's large cracks, sometimes it's small ones, and you don't get to see a lot of that beautiful glitter in behind it. So after taking the paint and decals off of this cup three times and sanding it until my arm felt like it was gonna fall off, I decided to go to Creative Fabrica and download a distressed crackle template because you can't use a spray paint on top of a crackle medium. So what is better than actually having a template and knowing that your crackle is going to be perfect every single time and you can use spray paint. And of course it is always amazing to have this subscription with Creative Fabrica so that when I have ideas like this, I can go straight there, download the files for free with my subscription and get to work without having to search for the best deals or spend extra money on testing an idea. If you don't have Creative Fabrica, then I will have a link down below for you to test it out for just a dollar for your first month and seriously, you will absolutely love it. You have access to millions of files, not only limited to templates or images, there's also tons of sublimation files. You can also get Lightroom presets to help with your photography, fonts, and tons more. So once I imported this file into my design space, I resized it to fit my Tumblr. That will vary depending on the size of the tumbler, the brand, and what size glitter and how many layers of epoxy you have on there. So just make sure that you measure your tumbler before resizing it. I just used a random temporary vinyl to cut out my stencil. I have weeded it, which was fairly easy since a lot of those lines are connected. It just took me a couple of minutes and I'm going to apply my transfer tape and just make sure that everything is pressed down really well. And then we're going to apply this using the hinge method to make sure that we get it straight all around the tumbler.
I had just a little bit of an overlap, so I just moved some of those pieces around to make it look like a seamless design. As I have already mentioned, this cup is just, it's sanded more than any tumbler that I think I have ever worked with. So if your tumbler is sanded before you spray paint, make sure that you're going in with a high grit, which means your sandpaper is going to have a finer and smoother texture to it and really sand over any of those deep sand marks of your tumbler because you don't want any of those deep sand marks or grooves to show through once you spray paint the tumbler. We are using vintage blush spray paint from Rust-Oleum. I gave this two light coats and once that is dry, we're going to remove our stencil to reveal the glitter underneath. Of course, I'm not going to show removing all of these stencils, but once you do have it all removed, then go in with a thin coat of epoxy. I used Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set so that in about two hours, I'm able to add on my decals. These florals are from Gracefully Created. It is a, another sheet that we have collaborated on. They will be available at gracefullycreatedccd.com on September 12th of 2022. So if you do want some of these florals, then definitely mark your calendar. And of course, I will notify you when they are available in the Brittany Barnes Boutique Facebook group. These are not only perfect for fall, but there are some very, very light blue or dusty blue, as well as the blush pink and light grays that would really tie them in to Christmas or winter designs as well. Now, I did make a small mistake and I believe it was just, I was so frustrated with this tumbler and then once I finally got the crackle that I wanted, I was excited and wanted to put epoxy over it. But after I completed the stencil removal or finished removing my stencils, I should have added my decal on and then applied a layer of epoxy. You want a layer of epoxy in between your decal and your florals if you plan to overlap them. About 90% of all of the sheets that Gracefully Created and I have worked together on are pre-cut. So all you have to do is remove the flowers or whatever the image may be and place it on your tumbler. However, this one is not pre-cut since there are so many tiny elements around those flowers. You definitely want to have a little bit of a clear border to help you place them without any of those elements like falling in on you or coming apart. If you have worked with printable vinyl before, you know exactly what I'm talking about when working with these small floral elements. And again, just make sure that you do put a layer of epoxy in between your vinyl and your floral decals. As you can see, I was trying to rub my nail over the vinyl and I did eventually end up cutting the vinyl out from underneath the flowers but that can be really tedious it can cause you to damage your vinyls and you may not have you know the correct ones to replace it so if you plan on putting your florals on top of your vinyl just put a layer of epoxy in between it there are enough florals on this sheet to do two full tumblers in this design i do have a larger floral cluster like this one right here and then there are two smaller ones that would be fit for a 16 ounce or a 24 ounce tumbler so when i am designing these sheets for gracefully created i keep in mind that we use 
lots of different size tumblers and I actually lay them out, have her send me a sample so that I can place them on the tumblers prior to launching them and make sure that they are pretty universal for at least the most popular sizes of tumblers. Now when applying these decals, as you can see, I will remove it from that backing and then replace it. So in a way I'm using the hinge method to apply them to the tumbler, but essentially I am avoiding putting my fingers on the clear part of the decal. We have oils on our hands and also we pick up glitter and paint and everything else while we're working in our craft room. And I don't want to trap any of that behind the clear portion of my decal. And also make sure that you have the edges pressed down really well. As long as your edges are pressed down completely and there are no little air bubbles showing once you apply a layer of epoxy on this, they will be completely seamless and look as if they were printed onto the cup. So for our first of two final layers, I am going to use Filter from Colorflex Pigments. This is such a beautiful extra fine glitter and it makes anything that is solid such as using vinyl or in this case a solid color spray paint sparkle. You might have noticed the mats that I'm using in the background. These are some new high quality PVC mats from Artistry and Colorflex. These mats are incredible. Epoxy will peel right off of them and glitter just falls right off. They are incredible. They have two different sizes, the big one that I'm using and also a 12 by 12, which is perfect for applying glitter. So once I finished adding this sparkly layer of epoxy, I'm going to pop that on my turner. I did use a facet once again, so I'm going to give this 30 minutes to cure and then go in with my final layer of epoxy. I have used this Be Real Not Perfect on another tumbler in the past, but I just felt like it fit this tumbler so perfectly because I had so many issues with it. but. As I always say, push through those issues and complete that tumbler. You'll feel so much better about beating all of the issues and having a beautiful tumbler in the end. This decal image will be available pinned at the top of the group in Brittany Barnes Boutique on Facebook. However, I am going to post a little video on how I made it using a free app in both our Facebook group and on Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That helps us out a ton. All of the materials that I have used are listed in the description below with some discount codes. That is all for today. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time.